Hello, it's Jim Hutchins for the Jerusalem Connection Truth Report for this week. I want to refer to an article that was re uh, written recently, recently by Avi Abalo in Israel, writing for Israel Unwired. And he deals with a subject that has been put on the back burner. It's not even discussed, basically. But Prime Minister Netanyahu brings it out in the open, and that's where it needs to be. <clears throat> Avi Abelo writes, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu shockingly reveals the honest truth about the war taking place today with Hamas in Gaza and around the world. <clears throat> Other world leaders will hate what he said. But he said the truth, while the rest of the world is still in denial of what he's talking about. Prime Minister Netanyahu wastes no time in defining today's war around the world as a religious war. This is a religious war, a spiritual conflict, spiritual warfare is going on, basically, is what he's saying. <clears throat> no Western leader wants to admit that, but Prime Minister Netanyahu says this, and boy does he say it with force. In response to the question from a journalist during a Q&A session, Prime Minister Netanyahu just laid the truth right out there for everybody to see. Netanyahu made absolutely clear that the conflict with Gaza, Hamas in Gaza, the Palestinian Authority, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Iran, etc., etc., are all one and the same. They are part of the religious war that some hundreds of millions of Muslims are waging against all of us, not just Israel, all of us. That includes us in America. He was quite clear that the war being waged against us all around the world is the same. Hundreds of millions of Muslims are waging a religious war. Not all Muslims around the world, but enough for it to be a major problem for all of us freedom-loving citizens of the world. The problem is that the most non-Muslims deny this. They don't even want to go there. It is inconceivable to them that they would be having a religious war in the year 2018. And that is why the Muslims are winning it, because they're the only ones fighting the war with nobody stopping them. <clears throat> Fights against, quote, terror. Even with some wins, won't stop the snowball religious war of Islam on the rest of the world. Yes, the West beat Al-Qaeda. Yes, the West beat ISIS. But the Muslim ideology to take over the world has not disappeared. It is what Islam is all about, and they have been patient. Very, very patient. So what's the solution? Prime Minister Netanyahu is quite clear that the world must identify the problem as a religious war and to then empower the moderate Muslims to be the ones to reform Islam for the future. That is the only way that jihadi Muslims will be stopped if Islam itself is reformed to spit them out. Question is, will that happen? And my re initial response is, I don't think it will happen. I really don't. I don't think that's the answer. The answer is still unknown. However, so long as the world leaders prefer to ignore the elephant in the room and deny that what we're all experiencing is a religious war, then the jihadi Muslims will definitely win. First step to solving the problem of, of Islam's war against us all is to define it correctly. It's true. Denying this problem exists as a quick path to allowing the hundreds of millions of jihadi Muslims to beat us all. Thank you, Prime Minister Netanyahu, for finally verbalizing this simple truth. May other world leaders follow in your footsteps. 
Maybe this is a sign of a change that the freedom-loving world desperately needs. That's the truth. Israel cannot fight this war against Islam alone to save the whole freedom-loving world. We have to fight it together. That's true, but I think there's something more basic and more important that we have to do. And I want to refer to the scriptures as to how the scriptures, how God's people have responded to their enemies. And the one I'm thinking of is from Psalm 83. Psalm 83 has been uh, put forth as uh, another war, but it's really a prayer a prayer of how to deal with enemies. I think it's very appropriate. Listen to part of it. Psalm 83, verse 1, O God, do not keep silent. Be not quiet, O God. Be not still. See how your enemies, are talking to God, your enemies, God. See how your enemies are astir, how your foes rear their heads. This is against God. With cunning, they conspire against your people. Now that's Israel. So it's God. Those who are coming against Israel are coming against God and vice versa. With cunning, they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation that the name of Israel be remembered no more. With one mind, the enemies of Israel plot together. They form an alliance against you. So those who are coming against Israel are coming against God. And those who share the values, the virtues of Israel are coming against God. <clears throat> and the goal of this, this prayer of Asaph in Psalm 83 is given in the 16th verse, of the closing verses. Cover their face, faces, these people who are coming against us who are coming against you. Cover their faces with shame so that men will seek your name, O Yahweh. May they ever be ashamed and dismayed. May they perish in disgrace. Let them know that you whose name is Yahweh, that you alone are the Most High over all the earth. That's the prayer that we need to be involved in. That's the prayer that Israel needs to offer. And that's the prayer that we need to offer. Because Islam is the personification of those who not only come against Israel, come against us, but they come against God. And that is the truth.